Okay, folks, there was a question sent to us about a man wanting to know how you get a horse to stop off of your seat. Well, as it turns out, I've got the perfect horse here to show him because this horse doesn't know how. And it, it's a 12-year-old horse that's been not ridden for the last five years. And what my job is to get past two trainers and ride this horse outside. It was taught to do two things, root its nose, to stick its butt in the dirt, and to spin. So I've got to get back to the foundation and start her over again. And what should be done by cowboying on her and go out and make a circle and I spend about 10 minutes on a two to three hour ride training. And then after X amount of days, the idea is for her to relax and go ahead and say, okay, I'll try again. But what you got here is a horse that's waiting for the other shoe to fall. There's very little trust. This is my bit, literally. And what you're gonna notice, what I do, is that this horse has already been ridden in a snaffle, broken mouth snaffle. And I've noticed, I can't say for sure because it's been too long, but most people now that are starting horses and training are using twisted wire snaffles or something, some variation. Well, that's something else I gotta get past. So I believe the reason the horse sticks its nose out is because it learned how to brace against the bit and the pull, which wasn't a fair pull. And there's two things that happen. One, horses either stick their nose out and root or else they get way behind the bit and go all the way to their chest. And they drop their head. And that's more common than what I'm dealing with here. This particular one just happens to root. So the cricket does several things. And one of them is, is that if the cricket's rolling, that means that the tongue is moving. If the tongue is moving, that means that it's relaxed enough to roll the cricket so it didn't have to ball up and push on the mouthpiece. When it's non-stop rolling, that means the horse is bothered. When it never makes a noise, that means the horse is either, like this one, waiting for the shoe to fall or they're pushing their tongue against the mouthpiece getting ready to get pulled on. When you hear the crick intermittently, cricket intermittently, that's when you've got them. So the bottom line is, is that this horse has got several braces. One of them you're gonna see when I ride it is this jaw is braced and I've got to get it to give. Well, I believe by pressure and release over time, I'm gonna get her to let go of this side of this jaw. The feet get stuck because the horse gets bothered. And whenever your horse's feet get stuck, it's a very bad, dangerous situation to be in because the next thing they do is blow one way or the other. I was told that the horse bucked and uh, since I restarted, I rode her probably half a dozen times and she, she's never bucked with me. And I'm not gonna go into why, cause it's like you gotta join group to do that. But I'm just telling you the horse hasn't bucked with me. So I'm gonna set it up. We're just, we're, our main concern right now is to stop. So what I have to do is get as high on my seat bones as I can. In other words, sit up. If you sit down like a rainer, then you're already shot. You can't, you can't teach them. In the performance world, horses are taught a different method. So I'm sitting up as high as I can so that when I drop my seat, it'll mean something. As I get in front of camera, I'm gonna ask her to stop. So when I sit down, I'm gonna pull at the exact same time. And you see where her nose went, right? Well, she hasn't connected the dots. She doesn't realize that sitting down means stop. What she does realize is that pulling means stop. So I've gotta convince her to listen to my seat instead of my hands. I want you to also notice that when I do stop her, 
If the nose goes out, the back goes down. So I need the back to come up. So the way I'm going to fix this horse is by backing. Several reasons. I need this horse to break at the withers, break at the third vertebrae, and break at the pole. She's already learned to root on the bit going forward. So I'm going to walk her backwards. And there's three positions for my hands. This is for the withers. This is for the third vertebrae. And this is for the nose. So I'm going to go in and out of those three positions. Now hang with me because getting collection started is going to give me a chance for this horse to listen to my body. If it's hollow backed and his nose stuck out, it's not going to be able to listen. Now, as I quit walking backwards, I'm also going to take my legs off, which means tighten these muscles and sit down. So that's through repetition, hopefully, that'll get the horse to understand. Now, backing again, I've got to feel it. I want her to have break it the withers a little bit more. I don't want my horse's head down low. This is going to be a ranch horse. It's going home in a western bit. So it has to be on the hindquarter. Now for those of you that like math, I'm going to give you some math. If you take a hundred percent horse, now you need to balance it. 50-50 means it's dead even. When you have a horse diving down in the front end, that means it's 54% on the front and only 46 on the hindquarter. What I want is a 52 on the hindquarter and 48 on the front end. So I can get that horse on the hindquarter. So I'm going to have this horse for at least three months and that's that's the time that I'm allowing for this to happen. I don't have to go to a fraternity. I don't have to be anywhere. What I have to do is go out and check cattle. You know, by the way, my horse is going to get good. Now, when I walk back up, let me put it this way. The right jaw there's nothing at all I can do about that right now. That's going to happen by walking circles. The backing up is going to get the horse on the hindquarter. The conversation is going to get started. Now, another reason you back a horse up is because it's a given that they can go forward. Horses naturally move forward. If they back up, A, they have to give you their brain, and B, they have to walk backwards, which is not real natural for them. So I get the horse's conversation going with me faster by walking backwards. Now I'm going to sit down, I'll exhale, and I'll take my legs off all at the same time. Now I'm going to walk forward and do the same thing. And, okay, I just made a connection. Now this horse is pretty smart, really. She's a little nervous, but she's smart. Now to me, I'm going to set the rein down because that's the biggest release I can give. When I touch the rein to pick it back up, one of those ears should check in. I'll wait till one goes forward. Now, see what happens? When I pick the reins up, the horse checks in. So now, I'm going to sit up, big bubble in my reins, dish in my spine and lean back and ask the horse to walk backwards. Now when this horse walks backwards on a loose rein, I have what's known as intentional steps. Now if you can hear the cricket, if you can hear the cricket while you're walking backwards, that means this horse doesn't have to push its tongue against the mouthpiece anymore. So I've made a breakthrough with the horse. All I have to do is convince this horse's brain that it doesn't have to worry about anything. Almost all the horses I get have been overexposed. In other words, 
too much was done too fast without getting a good foundation on them. And that's what I spend my time fixing. Now, as far as a student goes, I enjoy it because I get, you know, I get to learn a lot, but it's kind of bad when a 12-year-old horse is bothered. So now my legs are off. I've got a dish in my spine. Now I'm going to sit down and exhale without pulling. The conversation has started. Hate to be redundant, but walking a horse backwards, you have more of the brain. Forward, half of their brain is leaving the country. And now I'm going to set it up where I'm sitting down relaxed. Now I'm going to rise up on my seat bones and ask my horse to walk backwards. It didn't make it, so I helped it get started. Now my legs are off, I'm tightening my quads, there's a dish in my spine, and I'm not staring at her head. I'm not worried about her nose right now, I'm worried about her feet. So I'm basically helping her every other step. Now when you do this, you look down at your tracks, and if there's two drag marks, that means you can plant corn or you've got to get the front end off the ground. You don't have them if they're dragging their front feet. It's not there. Set it up again. Now incidentally, walking forward, I ask for very little collection because we're not there yet. So, here we are, horse. There's a change. Here it is, I picked up the reins. Horse understands what I want. I ask it again and I pitch the rein back to it. I'm not worried about the nose, remember that. I'm trying to connect my hands to this horse's feet. What I'm asking for is coming out the bottom of this horse's feet. I'm still having to help it. Every time you see my hands come back, I'm helping it. Now, the difference between a hackamore and a snaffle, for me, is that when I'm backing up, I've got equal pressure on both reins. Okay, that being said, if you don't release, you're going to fail. If you keep constant pressure on, you're going to fail. I'm trying to explain to this horse what I want. Now you can hear that cricket. There's a nerve thing going on because I'm, I'm training the horse. And every time this horse gets trained, it gets a little worried. That's why when I go make a circle, I only train him about 10 minutes going away from home. When I come home, there's no training. Walk and nod, walk and nod. There goes the skull. I say, excuse me. Horse pushes, gets bothered. That's a habit. The brain checked in. Now, it doesn't know whether I want to go forward or backwards, so I'm going to ask it to go backwards. Thank you so much. Now, if you don't have patience, don't do this. So now, I'm going to ask it to stop off of my seat. It didn't make it. It took two more steps and I had to put some pressure on the mount. It doesn't mean I failed, it just means I haven't connected the dots yet, or the horse hasn't. So I'll connect them again here. Now, if you watch this horse's pole, it's searching. Walking backwards, horse gets it. Walking forward, horse is through it. Well, this horse is processing this process. Reins are on the neck. When I reach for him, the horse needs to check in. I'm telling the horse, just relax, you're fine. Don't worry about it. As soon as the ears start to alternate like that, then I've broken this, the brain. In other words, this, the brain focuses on something else. So now. I can start walking forward. I'm still not asking for collection. And I'll, that was better. So now, we're starting to get a conversation going. The reason I keep setting the rain down, you guys, is because it's the ultimate release. Over the period of the next three months, I've got to build the muscles up on the top of the neck. 
their build up on the bottom of the neck from the horse doing this. Now you do not put a running martingale, a tie down, any of that. That's not how you fix this. You fix it with your hands. You fix it with riding outside. I say the word outside because I'm a real, as you can tell, we live in the hills. If you stay on flat ground in a flat arena, you're not going to get anything done. You're just going to get a horse that gets bored and resentful. If you get outside and get moving up and downhill, and then, oh, by the way, you sneak in 10 minutes of training on the way out, pretty soon you're going to get a balanced horse. So, here we go, partner. Now, I want you to walk forward, and then I'm going to ask you to stop. Didn't make it. Doesn't matter. Now I'm going to ask it to stop. Made it. Now I'm going to walk forward. I still had to pull. Walking backwards. Now, John St. Ryan, my friend, he has a thing it's called the go to. When a horse gets good at something and they're comfortable with it, just like this horse is good about walking backwards now, if they get frustrated, go ahead and back them up because that's the go to. In other words, they feel comfortable doing it. So why not? Why not monopolize on it? Now I'm going to ask for forward. You see the horse wanted to walk backwards. Now I'll make it a bigger stop this time. There, that was a little better and the horse kept walking. So I had to check it. Backwards. And forwards. And Good. That's how it starts. That's the answer to this question that took me forever to tell you, but who cares how long it takes. That's how you teach a horse to stop off your seat. I'd like you to notice the schooling, how fast it's done. This isn't a speed event, it's a thinking event. Oh, and by the way, the horse has to think too. So now you're gonna walk at the speed that the horse can learn. little side note, if you ride on the rail like this, that means you're only hand enough to ride half a horse. I don't care if you're in an arena or a round pen. When you're schooling, you get off the rail. Now you ride the entire horse. That was done very well. That's called a schooling walk, when a horse walks slow enough where you keep their brain when they're walking forward. Now I told you, when I'm coming home, I walk and nod. In other words, I want their reins swinging, head down, bobbing, I mean walking home. You don't want to be teaching collection and self-carriage on a horse coming home. I hope that answers the question for you, partner. And just remember, be humble. Don't, don't think you're real handy. But get some confidence up, because if you're not a fair leader, the horse is going to say, I'll do whatever I want. You don't seem to be able to make up your mind, so I'll just go ahead and make up my mind. So strike that balance. Be a fair leader. Thanks.